who is Dr. Anmar Kharia? Uh, there are no, so many facets to this man. Uh, we would like to bring him to the community. So far, he has bring, been bringing uh, the culture and uh, uh, arts to us. Uh, but I think very few of us have actually had a close-up uh, 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 look at Mark uh, Arian, this Dr. is a very Mark unique Mark. opportunity for us. We have met on numerous, numerous occasions. We have read about you, but we have never had a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And this very informal way of conversation, uh, I'd like to bring you to the community, and I'm sure they will appreciate getting to know you a bit better. But obviously, the, what got us together this, uh, uh, for this interview is your new book. And if you can show it to us, hold it up very proudly. Uh, tell us more about the book. Where did the idea come from? And I'd like to know if this is the first English language book you've written. Uh, well, let me start from uh, the back. No, it's not the first English language book. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, my first play, well, not the first play, but the first English play was performed on Off-Broadway in 1995. It was called Mirrors, and that ran for about three weeks on Off-Broadway. The second play, which was in English again, ran about two years ago on Off-Broadway. It was called Silence in a Circular Rainbow. Uh, I have uh, written other plays in English and edited. As a matter of fact, I have uh, the editor book. I edited uh, a book in Armenia about 13 Armenian playwrights. Mm -hmm. uh, this was uh, commissioned by the Writers' Union of Armenia. So, uh, so I'm not... Uh, uh, I'm familiar with the language, of course, very, very much, and uh, so this is not the first. I translated also, I'll show you the book, I mm -hmm. translated uh, Zahrad, Zahrad's uh, 153 poems of Zahrad. Uh, this is the book that was published just a couple of months ago in, in New York. Uh, so, and this, this book, which you uh, refer to, mm -hmm. The Martyred Armenian Writers, is a book about 13 writers. We wanted the aesthetic writers. There are people who have written essays, who have written, but they are not considered like literary masterpieces or even literature. So what I did was I picked the 13 literary masters who are, who are the only ones in this field, basically. Uh, the rest are just orators and things like that, which well, I don't consider them as as literary writers. First of all, let me say this, Vartan. Uh, uh, the, the 13, these 13 writers that you refer to, you know, the, uh, they range in age from 31 to 56. I mean, they were, they were youthful, they were masters. And uh, can you imagine, Ruben Sevak, for instance, was 31 years old when he was massacred, when he was killed. Had these people from 31 to 56, had they lived longer, only no. God would know what masterpieces they would have produced. So they are, the oldest of them was 56 years old. Who was he? Uh, Melkon Gurjan was his name. Fantastic writer. This, this man was a man who went to, you know, the Bantukht. The Bantukht were the... Uh, the, these immigrants or the migrants who had come to Bolis to work and most of them had problems. They had left their homes, their houses, their families and everybody back there and they had come here to survive. So this man used to go to their houses, to their khans, khans being the hotels or motels mm -hmm. all the time. He would go there and just investigate their lives. He would get to understand these people, you know, their worries, their concerns about their families and he would write about them. He would write about their returns, and he would encourage them. He would find things for them to do. And he came up with the Bantukti, with the migrants uh, notebook, and which became a masterpiece. Is there a common denominator among these 13 in terms of the, what they wrote about? I would assume well, Haira Nasiruchum patriotism is one. Uh, patriotism, as a matter of fact, more than that is to investigate, to get to, to delve into the lives of these people, their worries, their concerns, uh, the problems that they had. And some of them, as a matter of fact, because of the uh, atmosphere that they lived in, in the Ottoman Turkey, of course, they were not free to write about everything. So they, so, some of them started writing allegorically. How did these writings survive? Well, this is, it's a very, very interesting question because all of them, 
wrote with pen names. Mm -hmm. All 13 of them, they didn't use their names as such. Mildly, sometimes they... Siamanto, let's take Siamanto mm -hmm. for example. Krikor Zorab is the only person who wrote as Krikor Zorab. Interesting. Rupen Sevak, Rupen Sevak's name is not Sevak, it's Chilingirian. So he chose a pen name. Rupen Sevak is, again, of the 13, he's the second one that uses only one pen name. The rest, Gurjan oh. uses 13 oh. pen names. Siamanto uses five pen names. Varjan uses three pen names. Different pen names so that they wouldn't be tracked down. You know, so that the authorities, the Ottoman Turkey, wouldn't track them down as such. And uh, all of them, practically, this is, the, I mean, that is the c uh, commonality between these people. They wrote about their, their own people. They wrote about the concerns. Siamanto is a master, of course, is in describing the events. And, and a lot of people don't know this. What, what Siamanto wrote about were not the events in 1915. They were the events either in 1896 or the 1909 Adana massacres. Had he lived, I could just, sometimes I'm just, I wonder sometimes, had he lived to see the atrocities of 1915, God knows only what he would have written. Did the 13 uh, uh, authors and poets you have selected, did they write only in Armenian or are there other languages they... Well, they wrote in Armenian, few of them, as I mean, Krikor Zorab, when he went uh, to Paris, he wrote something in French. Uh, Sombat Purat, a scholar, a great scholar who had written volumes about Zaytun, he also wrote, he was, he was educated in France and he wrote uh, in French also. But the rest, all of them practically wrote in Armenian. How many of them were European educated? Well, they were educated in, they were educated in, Arme in, in Turkey, in Istanbul. Some, most of them went abroad. Most of them. Siamanto, for instance, was in Paris, was in, uh, in Lausanne, then he went to Paris and attended Sorbonne for a short while. Daniel Varujan was in Europe, he studied in Europe. Uh, Zohrab was a, a very, very short while in there. Indra, who nobody knows about, Diran Charakian, a master of master. I mean, I call him the Naregati of modern literature. His, his language is out of this world. His, his style is so, at times, it's so difficult. A lot of people, say, I would venture to say, 90% of Armenians, 99% of Armenians have not read Indra or Diran Shurakyan. Uh, so these people, uh, they were educated. All, Indra was a painter also. He, had, he, had, he attended uh, Paris, he went to uh, schools in Paris, in uh, Egypt also, he was in Egypt at, at one time. But he, they wrote in Armenian. They were all in the field of 99%, aside, aside uh, f uh, from uh, Krikor Zohrab and Rupen Sevak, the rest were uh, sc teachers Teacher. in Armenian mm -hmm. schools mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or editors mm -hmm. in Armenian newspapers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what is it uh, that you were trying to accomplish with this book? There These must have been... people are our great pride. Unfortunately, the world, well, let alone the Armenians, the world don't know about our wealth. Mm -hmm. And we have contributed, these writers, 13 mm -hmm. of them, have contributed to the world literature, I must say, not only Armenian mm -hmm. literature. Mm -hmm. Being translated, I'm sure people who read these prose and poems, they'll see how great these writers were. Had they lived on, I mean, that's another issue, of course, but at the same time, the literature that they have the Western literature, they brought it to a peak, to a, to a, the language that they used, the language was, became so beautiful, the Western Armenian language in the hands and the penship of these writers became immaculate. And the thing, Vartan, the thing that uh, I've, I've put a statement here at the back of the book, there is a phenomenon with these people, with the Armenians, generally speaking, and these 13 writers. You know, this literature, the literature that they came up with, the literature was formed in a country that was not Armenia. It was not Armenia. It was not, it was, it, they, we had literature in Russia and in Bolis, 
in those two areas. So this is the our literature kind of formed in a country that is that's the spoken language of which was not Armenian. It was Turkish, of course. Turkish. But these guys focused on the language Armenian and they raised it to an aesthetic level, unimaginable aesthetic level. Uh, Dr. Markarian, uh, one of the questions we have many times people are asked, people who do a lot in the community are asked, how do you find the time? Obviously, there's this passion. In fact, you do not decide on the time. Life dictates it upon yourself to do these things. But how do you find the time for all the many writings and the research and uh, community activities you're involved with? It's a very, very difficult. Uh, you know, you have 24 hours in a day. If you are working, you spend like eight hours working. By the time, if you have a family, you have to attend to the family and so on. So a lot of times, I mean, I'm lucky. I'm lucky because I, my wife, the support that I have from her is tremendous. Uh, she, she's kind of uh, not only supporting, but uh, I'll tell you, whatever I write, she's my first critic. <laughs> you need that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she, she's, she's there. She's uh, encouraging, she's supporting, she's... So basically what you're doing, in a way, every one of us, you, I, and the rest of us, we steal time from the family. Stealing means, I'm not saying that you're taking it like in a bad way, but you have a family that supports you, and so that if the family doesn't support you, then you can't. Absolutely. Uh, you may have the urge, you may have the thing. Uh, the thing that's good also, uh, I think a lot. I I I, I don't waste time. Mm -hmm. I uh, a, a lot of times when I have like a moment or two or three, I uh, I think about issues and they are boundless of issues in my mind. Uh, there is there's one uh, writer of the 12th century. His name was Frick. Frick has a statement, and I'll say it in Armenian. I'll try to translate it into English. Frick says in Armenian, in the, in, in the Armenian of those days, he says, Hans Medzamets Khorhurt Ari Vorhavidian Vonch Kadari. I thought of so many immense ideas that eternity will not be enough for them to be realized. Uh, let's go back to your book. I would like you to read to me the names of the poets you uh, 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 you bring to us, you 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 breathe life into, uh, just the names, uh, yeah. very quickly. Uh, we have, we start with the oldest and we go to the youngest. Oh, that's how it's arranged? Yes. Oh. Yeah, they're, they're arranged by birth, oh. birth date. Interesting. Yeah, okay. they're all arranged by birth dates and that's how we know who's 56 years old. I see. <laughs> that's so why. That's arranged. <laughs> I see. So the oldest of them who was 56 years old was Herant. His pen name was Herant. He was known as Herant. And his last, his f uh, full name was Melkon Gurjan, uh, Telgadinsi Hohanes Haratunyan, Krikor Zohrab, Sampat Purad, Yerukhan, Yervan Samakesh Khanelian, Ardashes Haratunyan, Rupen Zartarian, Indra, who is Diran Chirakian, Siamanto, Adom Yerjanian, Keham Parsegian, Daniel Varujan, Dikran Chagurian, Yev Rupen Sevak. And what are you going to read to us from this book? There is always something the author likes to read. Well, and the, coming from you will be very, very effective. You I know, think. it just uh, Martin. I mean, there are so many things in here that yes, I would have, yes. I would have referred to. But uh, uh, as a culmination, once I finished the book and I wrote the book, everything it was uh, there was something like missing something uh, that needs to be locked, something that... Uh, so, it, it took me a while, as a matter of fact. I knew that uh, my sentiments, everything was to be kind of exposed one way or another. So, uh, I wrote an epilogue mm -hmm. for the book, which, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. I'll read mm -hmm. it to your, mm -hmm. to your... It says, this is the epilogue, which is the last poem of mine that's in here. A candle lit... A candle lit will not shatter the darkness abound, may not suffice to mourn or cry, lament the dead 
and perished folk. A candle lit is too feeble to scream sorrow, trumpet loud for justice lost. A candle lit is not some goods to be traded. It is not gold, silver, or oil, nor a ruby, or a prize jewel. A candle lit stands alone on windowsills, burns endlessly in loneliness and hopelessness. But if you have that lit candle deep in the folds of your brave soul, then its feeble, flickering light becomes a sun, unbound and pure. Then the martyrs will come smiling row upon row of young and old, for the candles they lit before, before they faced their gloomy demise, now are shining deep in your soul. Light a candle for you and me. That's a very uh, moving. You know, you made a reference to the uh, book cover. This co book cover was made, uh, by, was designed by Nishan Kulian. It's, it's an original work, his work, and he specifically done this. And I'd like also to thank my editors. I uh, consulted several uh, editors, as a matter mm -hmm. of fact, for them to kind of oversee the, the writings. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. George Del Mertzian, Iris Chekenian, Gamk Markarian, Yeraz Markarian, Janet Markarian. Uh, those were my kind of first-hand editors. Beautiful. Uh, but, I mean, that's, that's related to the book, because without them, uh, I would have been successful. Where can book. we buy the book? Uh, the book is sold, uh, it's not sold on Amazon as of now, but it's sold through the publisher, Libra 6 Productions, Inc. Is, has published a book, and they are selling the book. It's listed for $20, and there's something else that I would like to tell to your audience. And if anybody wants to mail to be mailed to him, it is $25, shipping and handling included. Uh, uh, we can, we can uh, give the address of the uh, publisher. Uh, but uh, the other thing that we're doing, we'd like to, Vartan, and this is your audience, needs to know this. We would like this book to be distributed in colleges, universities, uh, everywhere that we can get to. So for that, we're looking for sponsors. Mm -hmm. People, sponsors who would sponsor 10 books, 20 books, to be mailed to a college of their choice. And as a matter of fact, what we're doing in this part of the book, under the cover, we will have a inscription, we'll have an inscription of the donor. In, and this is uh, to make it more general, uh, a, a donor may not want his name to be in there. However, it is in memory of so and so, their grandfather, their grandmother, or mm -hmm. something, who were who was the survivors of the Armenian genocide of 1915. In that way, we we'll, would like to cover as many as colleges and university libraries because there's where the young students uh, or the departments are going to see the book and learn about the Armenian mm -hmm. literature. So sponsors come forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is that's what the uh, to sponsor 10, uh, 20 books is five hundred dollars. Uh, because of the uh, the price, we'll take care of the uh, mailing and handling of the book. Uh, what else can you tell us about the book to wrap say, it up? I would say, you know, especially for the youth who, who who has not had the opportunity to read, who had not who has not had the opportunity to be exposed, take it, read it. Maybe who knows? Maybe this may trigger. People mm -hmm. may go on and do mm -hmm. something else because I have listed 39 general references in there. Mm -hmm. All in English. All in English. And this is, this is something that the youth has to get. Families, you know, families you know, buy it, you know, for your children, for your grandchildren, for your friends, American friends, non-Armenian friends. Show them that we are a proud nation. We have literature to be proud of. I mean, that's basically... What, uh, you know, books live, we don't.